Uh, this is an instructional uh, video for uh, the expanded collaboration multi-CAD uh, demonstration and for this demonstration we're going to go up to uh, the advanced machine design modeling uh, SE files folder where you'll find the Dixie Chopper or the Iron Eagle uh, lawnmower and so from that folder is where we're going to be uh, working fr from this data set as well as the working folder itself um, I've already got the file open and what I want to do is just basically step you through this particular demonstration. It's very similar to the one in ST3 but there have been some some changes that we've made and we'll point them out as we go along the way. So the first thing that you want to do is come in and change your display config to the 08 import data. And that's going to take us down to the frame where we can roll the frame over and we can kind of zoom in. Now what I like to do is I like to get my asteroid so my s center of rotation is where it needs to be before I do any place in place activating or any type of uh, uh, thing like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start with the 2D to 3D. So we're going to go ahead up to the open dialog or the open option under the application button there and whether you're uh, first using first angle or third angle we have both DWG files in this case I'm going to use the first uh, casting.dwg click on the options dialog which is going to bring up the uh, translation wizard and of course we can preview the file and it'll probably come in black initially you can show them how you can change it to white show them a little bit of window manipulation and uh, you, we have control of layers. All of that information is there. And then you can basically step through. Now before I begin, I want to point out that I'm looking at the one SEA CAD AutoCAD uh, .ini file. This is a file that gets copied up when you run uh, the setup uh, uh, bat file. It'll push it into the program folder or you need to copy it into the program folder. The next thing I want to point out is I'm also using the template called metric underbar draft.dft. We deliver this with the quick look demonstration. So if I go back to that very quickly under demo setup you'll see files to copy and under here you'll find the metric templates, uh, the reports, the quick look and under, let's see, uh, you'll also find the uh, under program you'll find the one SE uh, AutoCAD INI file. So all of that is available to you when you're when we set up this particular demonstration. So we're just going to step through and talk about each one of the options that each one of those uh, wizard options that the five through eight steps that it takes you through and when you're done you click on finish and then just simply open the document. When it opens it up in draft uh, obviously you've got the, uh, the the drawing file here and before you actually create 3D from this 2D geometry you'll want to make sure that you uh, hold your shift key down and turn off border text and center uh, you want to hide those layers that turns off information that doesn't need to be copied in now if you forget to turn that off and then you run the 3D it can change your results so it's important to turn those three off then run your create 3D and again make sure you're looking at your metric underbar part .par file which is one of the templates that we copy into the program solid edge uh, program template folder um, so we'll click on next and then for the first view we'll fence the top view next the right view next and then uh, the front view and then we can click on finish it takes us into the part environment again this is something you've probably already seen but uh, really powerful uh, capabilities here now all we want to do is create a solid from this information so I'm going to right mouse button click for the radio menu grab the extrude and I'm going to change it to chain accept that and then you can show them show them how you can uh, go in and out you know and then you want to lock into that depth the next thing that we want to do is we want to hit your space bar to get multiple selections and select uh, these regions and we're going to accept that and you want to show them how it removes material adds material but in this case we want to switch it to add because you're going to go through to the other side and pick up that endpoint. Now a lot of times make sure when you do an endpoint that you have that actual endpoint uh, turned on or it won't pick up the endpoint. Then we want to pick the whole regions. Again, spacebar to 
set my selection to plus minus and then you get those holes and you can just blast those holes right through very quickly. What I like to do then is that we need to add these holes and so I just basically rotate the model and I fence select these particular holes and then I do a minus because, because, because we're starting down here where there's no information it's going to actually automatically add material so I just switch it to minus and I take them up through the part and it adds those holes very quickly. The final thing is to add a quick round. It's a three millimeter round so I just step these first four surfaces very quickly and then I grab this bottom surface and right mouse button click to accept the rounds and then at that point you can um, using your select tool you can hide sketches and sometimes I'll even turn off uh, not PMI I'll turn off the base coordinate system just just a little bit less information on the screen also we want to just point out that we can manipulate this geometry so you put your cursor in the field and you can scroll it or you can key in 12 millimeters but 12 millimeters is what we're looking for there now at that point uh, the part is pretty much done so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to the assembly and I want to make sure our hole spread is correct so for that I'm going to go to the inspect smart measure and I'm going to pick this hole this hole and you notice as I pull it up it says it's 57 they're 57 uh, millimeters apart from each other so that means that I want to switch back to my part and I want to look at this and you'll notice that actually these holes are 60 millimeters apart so we're going to change that and you can scroll it to whatever you want it to be but I'm going to make it 57 and then at that point I can turn off my PMI I can save the file and it's easy just to pick that bottom one and then change that 6 to a 7 and hit the save button. Now you can leave the file open. As we go back to the assembly document you'll notice that when we go to place that file parts library at first it goes to the working folder but you'll notice that we have an option called open document so while that documents open it will actually allow us to grab it and drag it into our file so I'm going to align the center hole and then I'm going to mate and then I'm going to pick that cylinder and align it there and for the most part we should be in pretty good shape but as I scroll up you'll notice that actually it looks like the hole in this frame as we highlight is off on the right side there maybe we should have checked that but in this case this is uh, what we're wanting to show so what is kind of a neat thing to do here is just go to the um, wireframe display and then using your control space you can go to face select and fence in half the outer half of that block and then it's going to give you the steering wheel which you will want to put in the center of the hole that's in the block and then as as we rotate this a little bit we want to get that you know that primary axis going to the right and so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to move the center of that hole as soon as it uh, begins to move I'm going to pick up the center of that uh, the hole in the frame and now we should be good to go so I'm going to go back to solid and go to the top view and you can see that it aligns it perfectly so that works very well so that's 2D to 3D and being able to open documents and then again through synchronous being able to make uh, manip manipulations to the files so what about opening other documents such as SolidWorks or Inventor in this case here's an Inventor file well guess what we have a uh, direct uh, translator now built into ST4 so with this IPT file I can click on the open button you want to pick the metric part click OK and you'll see that the inventor translation process begins and it shows you the progress through this little uh, inventor translation dialog box and there's the file so we're now we're live we're actually um, generating generating a live solid edge file from the inventor I'm gonna turn off the base and I'm gonna change the uh, the color just so it's easier to pick uh, these files out 
and I always like to go up and just clack, click on the blue and when I'm done with that I'm gonna hit the save button and I'm just gonna save it with the INV name again I'm gonna leave that file open come back to solid edge and as we go over to the part library there it is in the open documents because I left it open drag it right in now you do want to align the center and this needs the the holes needs to be facing the opposite direction so I'm gonna hit the tab key to flip it and then notice the time you can just zoom right up and you can see that that dark top edge right across there so I'm gonna pick using quick pick that top plane of that uh, keyway and then I'm gonna come over and pick the top keyway there and then escape to get out of that I'm then going to use the drag so that I can drag this document and I'm gonna drag it over and I just kinda eyeball it because we're gonna place the solid works part in the center here so I just kinda eyeball it move it over and you can adjust it at any time so that leads us to the next file which we want to open which is the SolidWorks document so we'll go ahead and open it up again a direct translator for SolidWorks which by the way has been enhanced for uh, ST4 it's much more reliable and it just does a better job overall you really won't notice the difference as you do the translation but I will tell you that it does a much much better job so at that point we can save this document keep the same name it's got the SW on the front end and in this document I'm actually gonna go ahead and close it so when you go back to parts library to bring it in even though it's not in the open documents because we closed it you can you should still have your working folder in the list and just go right to the working folder and there's a the file and so I'm gonna drag it in now one key thing that you need to make sure you do for this demo is when you align don't align to this outside make sure you align to the center uh, hole in that part and then what you want to do is you want to get this back face and made it to this face and in this case I'm gonna tab over so it flips it over and then I'm gonna pick this hole and pick that hole and that should lock it into the position that you're looking for for this part the next thing that I want to do is I want to make a change to this file. I want this file to be able to meet this file and I want to match that design. So I'm going to in place activate. We can use the control Q keys to turn on and off the background components. I'm going to use a right mouse button click and I'm going to select the face off the inventor part. Right mouse button click to accept and you notice it puts me right in the mode to pick up and so I'm going to pick that bottom face and it creates the protrusion directly then I can put my cursor in here and I can scroll that to whatever I want but in this case I'm going to key in a value of 10 millimeters and then at that point we can close and return back to the top level and again doing this is very simple now uh, in ST4 as you can see uh, direct translators for inventor and solid works bring in 2d to 3d and we've got our design completed now one thing I would do want to point out is that I'm working uh, all of this information I'm working in is in this assembly 010002 and these files are at the top level so what I'm actually going to do is use a shift key and get all three of these files and under modify I'm going to use the transfer command to transfer these documents to the appropriate subassembly and I'm just going to click that a subassembly and then click the OK button and it moves them in there as it should and if you want you can even open that up and scroll down to the bottom and show them that it did put those in that subassembly the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, we're going to create some inner part relationships between the uh, the uh, SolidWorks part and the 2d to 3d part so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click the create inner part relationship. I'm then going to pick the the uh, in uh, the solid works part, and then I'm going to pick the 2D to 3D part, and it's going to bring up the list of. In this case, everything's checked, and you can just basically save those options as they are. 
Now when that's completed, it's, it's created the relationship, so if I make any changes, those relationships should hold. Again, using the control space bar, put me into face select mode. I'm going to grab this face, and I'm simply going to move it up. And I'm just going to move up about 12 millimeters. And once I key that in, you'll notice that the green part will reevaluate and adjust itself to the new height. And there's our design. And finally, if we want to do some documentation, uh, we can actually come up and use the Save As. And we now can create uh, a 3D uh, uh, PDF file. So I'm going to go ahead and just save that in the working folder. Make sure I'm in the right folder here. Click on the Save button. It'll create that PDF file. So then you just open up that folder, and there's your PDF. So we'll go ahead and double-click that, that. And it's going to open up the PDF file. And as I expand this, you'll see that I can, I can scroll and move it around, rotate. I can even come over and look at the, um, at the files that are, that are in, within this document. There's my sheet metal uh, inventor file. You notice they highlight in PDF. There's the 2D to 3D file, SolidWorks file. Everything's there, all in PDF. So this is the instructional video for, uh, uh, for the uh, multi-CAD uh, demonstration that we talked about. And uh, again, under the uh, Quick Look Demos, that is the uh, number four expanded collaboration multi-CAD demo. Uh, and all the movies are within the movies folder, but you are using the number one uh, uh, Quick Look files to do the demonstration. With that, this concludes this instructional video.